The concept of monotheism, since the creation of man on earth, has been the foundation of all divine messages. There is a big difference between the ancient communities, the pagans who worshipped idols, and we who pay tribute and respect to the Prophet and Imam Ali and Imam Hussein when we call upon them as a gate to Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين in the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate our praise and gratitude is it due to our Lord we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon all of his messengers his prophets upon the seal of the messengers Muhammad and his immaculate family and his righteous companions. And may his peace, the peace of the Lord, be with you and upon you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In continuation of the concept of monotheism and the unity of God, Tawheed, in the past, I mentioned that Tawheed has dimensions and branches. Furu'ut Tawheed, the branches of Tawheed. One of them is Tawheed al that, the unity of the essence of God. Tawheed al-Sifat, the unity of the attributes of God, which I am going to explain now. The third, Tawheed al-Af'al, the unity of the deeds of God, which I am going to explain later. The fourth, Tawheed al-Ibadah, or At-Tawheed al-Ibadi, the unity, the integrity of serving God and worshipping God and nothing but God. And this fourth dimension is the most important dimension of Tawheed. And then Tawheed al-Malikiyah, Another dimension is the unity of the ownership of the universe. It is owned by one corporation, the entire universe, one company. And that corporation or company is God. And Tawheedul Walaya, the unity of the leadership. We have only one leader in this universe. Allah waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ilan nur. But let's go now to the second dimension of Tawheed. Tawheedul al-Sifat. What does it mean, Tawheedul al-Sifat? The unity of his attributes or characters. It means in one sentence, brief sentence, ذاتُهُ صِفَتُهُ عَيْنُ ذَاتِهُ God's attribute is exactly His essence. What does that mean? It means that if you take the, an attribute out of Him as if you are negating His existence, Negating his essence. Let me simplify this. You and me. We are human beings. When we are born, when we were born, we had nothing. We did not understand. We had no knowledge. We did not even know what is going on around us. But slowly, slowly, day by day, week by week, we started to grasp things, to understand things. Then they send us to school. We started to learn. We moved from the first grade to the second to the third. We finished elementary school. We went to 
middle school, we went to high school, we went to college, we went to university. Some of us went to the seminary to study. We started to learn. So the knowledge did not come at once. It was in a gradual steps. This is not the case with God. When we say God is omnipotent, when we say God is omnipresent, when we God, when we say God is knowledgeable, alim, he is alim, knowledgeable from day one, where he has no day one. He has no day one. So his knowledge is his essence. His knowledge was not added to his essence later on. It's not an addition to his essence. It is his essence. While when it comes to me and you, my attribute and my character or the things that I have, I did not have them one day. Later on, I possessed them. Later on, I obtained them. This is not the case with God. Everything God has, and he has everything, it's from day one. It was not added to him. So you cannot say one day God, his knowledge was limited on this issue. Then he learned. You cannot say this with God. His knowledge was full and from the first day. Nothing has been added to his knowledge. When it comes to me and, and you, God knew about me and you before we were born, before we came into the world of, into the world of existence. My parents knew about me when I was born. Before my birth, they didn't know anything about me. God knew about the details of my character and my soul and my deeds and my achievements and my failures and my success and my life and my secrets before I, before I came into the world of existence. This is his knowledge. This is the scope of his knowledge, which is unlimited. Now you come to another dimension of him. His life. My life and your life is limited. We have a beginning, date of birth. This is why you have to know your date of birth. Before that, you did not exist. Physically, you did not ex exist. Maybe spiritually, you did. So you have a point where you started your life. And then there is a point where your life is going to end. And you live in between the date of birth and the date of death. God has no date of birth, neither a date of birth, uh, death. God has no beginning, neither he has an end. God, Allah, la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum, hay, the living, the self subsisting. I had to have a father and a mother in order for me to be a living person. God does not have a father or a mother. Nobody created him. He's self-subsisting. Allahu la ilaha illahu. There is no Lord but him, al hay the living, al qayyum self-subsisting. Nobody created him. How is that? Because we study in philosophy that wujud, the existence, is of three types. One is mumtani'ul wujud. There is a type of existence which is impossible, mumtani. It never happens. Such as, ijtima'un naqidayn. Two things that contradict each other, they cannot be at one point, at one time, in one place. For instance, an example of that, you cannot say this is white and dark. 
at the same time. You can't say. At the same time, very same time, this object is dark and white, it cannot happen. Either white or dark. You cannot say this is absolutely white and then absolutely dark or black at the same time. That does not happen. This is ishtima'un naqidain. Or you cannot say now it is broad daylight here, here in this area, in the same area, not in a different area. And then at the same time in the same area, it is night. Either it's a day, yes, it could be a day in London, but a night in California, that happens. But at, this, at the same city, at the same time, it is day and night, it cannot happen. This is impossible. This type of existence is impossible. Mumtana. Then we have another type of existence which is mumkinul wujud, mumkin. And the example, the very clear example of that is me and you. Mumkin means it could happen and it could not. I've, I could have been in this life and I could have not. God could have created me and he could have not created me. So I am mumkin, you are mumkin. Everything else in this universe is mumkin al wujud. Then we come to the third and the most important type of existence and wujud, and that is wajib al wujud. And we have one example of wajib al wujud. And that example is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wajib al wujud which is absolute existence, or some people call it self-existence, essential existence. What does essential existence mean? He was not a created. We were created because we are mumkin al wujud. So we had to have a beginning and we're going to have an end too. But God is an essential existence, self-existence. Nobody created him. He has no beginning. Wajib al-wujud is only one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the source and the cause of every creation in this universe. When it comes, so this is his life. His life is eternal. Allah's life is eternal. Everything should perish one day. Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. Everything is going to perish one day. God remains. Look at the cosmos system. It did not exist. We've, we have been told that the age or the life of this earth here is about, is about four and a half billion years. The age of the sun is about five billion, billion years. Everything has an age, everything has a, a limit. And I'm going to elaborate on this on another session, inshallah. How God is limitless. Everything is limited when it comes to God is limitless. Everything has a limit. Everything has a beginning and an end. God does not have a beginning or an end. When it comes to his generosity, we say Allah Kareem. And we say Fulan, this man is also Kareem, but there is a big difference. The man became Kareem and generous and kind and giving and charitable and this and that, not from the first day, not from the first day. Some people, they become generous in the first year of their life. Some people, after they reach the age of puberty, others, when they become youth, middle age, at some point they became generous. God is generous from day one. And generosity and kindness is part, part of his life and his essence. They are inseparable, indivisible. 
You cannot separate God, his essence, from his attributes. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ Wherever you turn, can you go to a place, to an island, to a mountain, and you say, God, he has less presence here. He has more presence in Mecca, less presence in Australia, let's say. You can't say that. The same God who has a strong and full and absolute presence in Mecca, in the Kaaba, inside the sacred mosque, he is, he has the same presence in Paris, in London, in Johannesburg, in Los Angeles, in the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, in the moon, in the sun. He's everywhere. Whatever direction you turn, God is there. Some people ask then, if God is everywhere, why do you have to go to Mecca? Call upon him here in your house, in your village. Stay in, in, in Tanzania, stay in South Africa, in India, in North America, in Toronto, and pray to him. Why do you have to travel all this distance? We travel all this distance not to find God there because he's missing here. We travel this distance. This is a statement that you invited me. You asked me to come to this specific area. I'm listening to you. I'm obeying you. You wanted me to be in this point. Not that you were not in that other point. You were there. But you said to the Muslims, during the Hajj season, I want you to gather in this point so you can learn with each, from each other. You can interact, interact with each other. So they witness benefits, political benefits, Islamic unity, Islamic awareness, Islamic harmony, working together, learning from each other. This is the purpose of Hajj does not mean that if you pray upon, uh, call upon him in your village, he can't listen to you because there is no good reception. But he has good reception in Mecca. No. He has good reception everywhere. Everywhere. In the bottom of the ocean, he can listen to you at the surface of the earth. If you fly 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet in the air, the same reception. Strong reception. However, the reception depends on my heart. Sometimes the heart does not send good signals. His ears are powerful. But the heart has a weakness, my heart. Because of sins. The sins take us away from him. And then the signal does not reach you. إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْتَجِبُ عَنْ خَلْقِكَ إِلَّا أَنْ تَحْجُبَهُمُ الْأَعْمَالُ دُونَكَ You don't veil yourself from your people. They themselves, they veil themselves by themselves through their sins. So the heart does not send good signals. Because the heart is ailing. The heart is sick. Through what? Through sins. Through keeping myself busy with this dunya. Through keeping my brain busy with my desires and my whims. So the heart does not send strong signals. So we cannot separate God from His presence. He is present everywhere. He is powerful, omnipotent. His power and his authority did not come later on, was given to him, bestowed upon him later on. He is powerful, sovereign from day one, where he has no day one. 
He has no day one. This is a figure of a speech when we say from day one. He has no day one. He's eternal. As a Lee. And he has the power from that day. His power never diminished. You know some monarchs and some leaders, political leaders, one day, they are powerful, very powerful, extremely powerful. After two months, they lose that power completely. Or the power is diminished. They curtail some of their influence, some of their uh, jurisdictions, some of their powers. It is being curtailed. But this is not the case with God. God is always powerful. Always. It does not, his, his, his authority, his power does not fluctuate, does not go up and down. He's always up. Always. This is the meaning of Tawheedul Sifat. His Sifat, his characters, his attributes is exactly his essence. You cannot separate between them. You cannot say his knowledge one day was so strong and so vast, today he has less knowledge. You can't say this about God. His knowledge is exactly the same from day one to the last day where he has no day one and no last day. This is the difference. وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ In Surah Al-Ra'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself in one sentence. Surah Al-Ra'd, which is chapter 13 and verse 16. وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ Qahar is irresistible. لا تقهره القيود ولا يسلب منه شيء. Nothing can conquer God. Nothing can defy God. Nothing can resist God. He is irresistible. He is the conqueror. He is the victor. He is the mighty. He is the powerful. We have Qahir and Maqhur. Qahir is the conqueror. Maqhur is the conquered. God is always conqueror. Nothing can compromise the power, the might, the knowledge, the authority, the pride of God. Nothing. When it comes to us, we fluctuate. One day we feel dignified. One day we have a sense of a pride, sense of arrogance, sense of authority. The other day, these things are taken from us. I have seen many leaders, sovereign leaders, many head of states, many monarchs. One day he's so powerful, he has a pride and arrogance, he sits on the throne. The other day he dies in a village, nobody asks about him. There was a dictator in, the, in one of the countries of the Middle East. People, they feared not alone to, to talk to him, they feared looking at him. Even those who work with him, when he heads the cabinet of ministers, his ministers, they could not look into his eyes. They have to drop cast down their eyes and talk to him and call him my master, my Sayyidi, you are my master. Even some family members, they could not look him into his eyes because of his savagery, brutality. Then he was captured in a hole just by himself. Nobody guards, no helpers, no cousins, no children, no army by himself. So he was conquered. He was humiliated. God, Al-Wahid Al-Qahar, irresistible. Nobody can conquer God. God is the same, always powerful. His attribute is exactly his essence. His knowledge would not be com compromised. See, even with great scholars who are well-versed and very knowledgeable, 
one day they forget their own names. One day they forget the name of their wives and their children and their friends. They don't recognize them. Those who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, they forget even their own names. When it comes to God, God always is knowledgeable. This is the meaning of Tawheed al-Sifat, His essence and His characters are exactly the same. There was one small group of philosophy in Islam, al karamiyyah only little tiny group who do not exist anymore. They believe that the essence uh, the, the characters, they are created after the essence. That was the only exception in Islam. But all other Muslims, they refuted their claim and they believe in both the traditions in Islam. They all believe there is a consensus that the essence of God is exactly his character and the character is his essence. الصفات عين الذات والذات عين الصفات and we're going to continue inshallah on other dimensions of God's attributes and God's unity and monotheism والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته